Yes, yeah, so I'm representative from a corporation. We need to kind of be fact-based. So um, let me guide you a bit to uh, how we from Siemens see uh, sustainability and uh, which kind of impacts that has uh, had on our corporation. Because in uh, able to be able also to take the social responsibility towards our global employees and, uh, and our partners in society and also in the business world, we need to adapt and we need to adopt to sustainability in a very rigorous way. So ladies and gentlemen, Mike, dear panelists, um, I'm going to uh, lead you through the um, kind of facts which we have been gathering now for a, a couple of years and uh, primarily based on studies in uh, global cities. Uh, we have a definition that is uh, saying that uh, mega cities, cities which contain more than 10 million inhabitants, uh, have a particular pressure on solving sustainability issues. Uh, we have based this with uh, research. We have performed a number of studies and uh, also disclosed a lot of reports uh, telling the true story and how technology and how society can act together in order to combat some of the sustainability challenges. Some facts. Uh, in 2007, hum humanity reached a demographic milestone. 2007 was that year when more people gathered in urban cities and urban urbanizational uh, pieces of the world than in the rural areas. In 2030, it's scheduled that over 60% of the global population will be moving into cities and be living in cities. And that causes constraints in the infrastructure, in the transportation, but also in the quality of life, which we also had heard Mike and Gregor talk about. 1950, there were only two megacities in the world. It was New York and Tokyo. 1950. 1975, two more were added. It was Shanghai and Mexico City. And that was 1975. 2004, it has been rocketed up to 22. So 22 mega cities, cities with more than 10 million inhabitants. And whether it's a mature city or a city in transition to be a mega city or a city that is really emerging, it's probably the same challenges in the city, but they are taken care of differently. It's the infrastructure challenge, number one, of course. Uh, and they are in particular the same. Why is the issue about cities so important? It's the fact that the mega cities are primarily also the driver for economic growth in the nations they reside in. So it's really in the cities where the whole growth perspective and the economic development takes place. And if that goes in the wrong direction uh, in a city of that size, it has heavy implications on the rest of the society. Within Siemens, we have uh, found that um, we need a stable strategy, a stable vision. And um, what goes for the world and globe as such is also very valid for cities. Because we are all confronted in these four, what we call uh, at Siemens, for megatrends. They are not very sharp-edged, uh, quick, frequent economic changes. These are megatrends, which are kind of a sustainability in itself. It's a change in the urbanization. It's the change in demog demography. It's the climate change aspects. And of course, it's part of the global network. It's the globalization. Those four elements have been uh, the key driver for Siemens to put up its business in order to demonstrate that we are willing to take the challenge to make the world a better place to live in. And these are not, again, short-faced trends, which could be swifted into a new strategy each and every year. These are long-term commitments and long-term trends that we need to face.
this standalone um, is a complexity and a challenge in itself. But seeing them together creates even more of a complexity. And my intention was really to kind of um, highlight three areas where we believe that cities need to take up uh, and take seriously actions towards in order to make their cities. And as we heard, Vancouver is already on its good way to be the greenest and most attractive city in North America. And it's really about the competitiveness as number one. And being competitive, which also then needs to be in an environmental friendly environment where people live and feel that there is the right culture in that city. And what that all brings is the quality of life. And quality of life, again, closes the circle in order to make that city an attractive business place or an attractive place to live in. So let me start with the first aspect, competitiveness. One-fifth of the global GDP is generated in the 10 economically most important cities. So 20% of global GDP, roughly in 10 of the most economical, biggest and most important cities. And they also make a on disproportionately big contribution to the nation they are in when it comes to economic growth. They need to have the ability to compete on a global level. They need to be able to attract investments. They need to develop modern IT and communication. And another crucial factor is that they need to develop basic services. The needs of the people, clean water, clean air, decent transportation, uh, economical environments, sound living conditions, etc. That's the coup for cities to compete on the global market. The second issue would be, and the second concern would be the environment. It would probably be wrong to assume that um, growth is automatically bad for the environment. It's obvious that uh, a city with 20 million people creates a lot of thrust and a lot of tension in the environmental system. But it could also be argued whether that is still better than having 20 million people living in rural areas. It could also be assumed that there is, thanks to this density, that there is some possibilities to act more efficient and promote and introduce solutions that are more cl clever and, again, more efficient and more and less uh, resource uh, uh, demanded. So it's still a debate whether it's good or not to have that conglomeration in cities. But whatever the, the, the view is, whether it's good or bad in that sense, it's still the catalog of environmental problems that arises on the horizon for those cities. Historically, there was a kind of trend that uh, first the cities, the mega cities, get rich. And after that happened, they kind of really realized they need to deal with the consequences. And they really cleaned up. Not everybody has done that. If that's the view for the future, that won't work. So that needs to be simultaneously addressed the development of the city and the responsibility to the environment. The third and the last of these concerns is uh, certainly the quality of life. And that affects all classes of populations, whether we are rich or poor. It's the same environment that creates the living conditions for us. If we could provide, and the city can provide good uh, and quality life uh, conditions, we will be able to retain and attract people. Although we know that people, and one of our tasks is also to provide mobility for people, although people get mobi mobile, there is still an attractiveness in the city due to the quality of life aspect that makes them 
stay, that makes them attracted and makes them retained. And this in turn drives actually the growth within the community and in the city. And if that growth also kind of develops and embraces the, the full potential of the individuals, and there is this trustworthy relationship between inhabitants, the technology provided, and the policy around the city. That gives a higher productivity. And that productivity, again, closes the circle and makes the business environment more positive. Which, of course, can be discussed, but that's why we are here in the panel. It's very much about connecting these three concerns. The virtual cycle between the competitiveness, the environment, and the quality of life. First approach would be, hmm, in order to kind of align two of these three elements, we need to make trade-offs. I think that would be the wrong way to go. We need to really see that as a circle. And the one thing, the competitiveness, brings the business growth, brings the quality of life, and with that we have closed the virtual cycle. In a summary, I shouldn't be standing here as the CEO for a big global technological company in order to just talk to you about the soft elements. Because we strongly believe within Siemens, and that's why we also have really putting out a course to go in direction sustainability. And whether it's for the production side, the capacity in the industries, whether it's in the energy fields, or whether it's in the environmental and healthcare environment, we are fully committed to provide technology in order to make cities more green, more sustainable. Um, however, if technology would have been the only lever to reach that sustainability, we would already have been done. We could have taken this Globe 2010 to a big celebration instead of wondering what we need to do in the future. But that's probably not the fact. I think it's important for us now to really act, and we, we saw good examples how Vancouver does it. It's really time for action. We know that these, to introduce those technology systems takes time. We still have some time to do that. And I would also say that the technology is available today to really make cities sustainable. Um, it's about how we embrace the, that technology and that we have the will to embrace and introduce that technology. So that would be my final remark, so in the, in the introduction, and looking forward to the discussion as well. Thank you.